365 days, 365 messages God has in store for you in each day. Great is our God, written by Fernando Savala. Come, join us. Let's see what God has in store for you. Hello, friend. We're so glad that you're here for today's devotional titled, He is on your side. The key text for today is found in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 31. And it says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Let us pray. Dear Lord, sometimes we feel alone and we feel that we're struggling. But we ask, Lord, that you give us understanding in your message for us today and that we know that you are with us by our side. May we see you and experience you in every part of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have ever come to the conclusion that God is upset because you failed him, today's text brings good news. It says God is on your side. What does it mean that he's on your side? At least two very good things. One is, if God is on your side, then you're already a majority. That is, who can be against you? Neither the world, nor the devil, nor temptation can be against you as long as God is with you. The other good thing that happens when God is on your side is that he who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things, according to Romans chapter 8 verse 32? To understand the scope of this great news, we first must understand the meaning of the word spare. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, Spare means being over and above what is needed, to refrain from, to give up as not strictly needed, to relieve of the necessity of doing or undergoing something. What the Apostle Paul is telling us in Romans chapter 8 verse 32 is that when it became necessary to redeem us, God did not say, what is the least I can do to save them? Or how can I decrease the price of what I have to pay? None of that. In order to save us, the Father didn't spare anything. Rather, he gave it all up with his son's life. What then is the conclusion of the matter? Paul states that if, in order to save us, God gave up his beloved son, then he will certainly give us, along with him, everything else, his love, his forgiveness, his acceptance, even if we have turned our backs on him. Isn't this wonderful? The latter is illustrated well by Dwight L. Moody with the story of a young man who traveled to Chicago to sell his father's harvest, a farmer who was also a preacher. Worried, the father traveled to the big city only to learn that the boy had sold the grain but had spent much of the money on gambling. Then he had traveled to California fleeing. That is where the father traveled too. When the man arrived in San Francisco, he placed ads in the paper. Then, one day, after preaching at a local church, the father noticed that someone remained in the church after the service was over. It was the boy. What did the father do then? Did he scold him? Did he tell him he was ungrateful? None of that. Moody says that the father hugged his son and took him home with him. He spared no effort. Isn't that what the good Heavenly Father has done with us? As we meditate on today's devotional, let us pray. Thank you, dear Father, because you're always on our side during our struggles, during our challenges, and especially when we have sin. We praise your name today and always. Amen. We're glad that you joined us today for the devotional. We pray that God blesses you that his presence is with you throughout this day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.